I'll choose a, a story from the Philippines, actually. We were sharing the gospel door to door and having a great campaign there. And we ran, you know, predominantly in the Philippines is Catholic. We ran into a lady there that was Catholic. And as we were studying with her, we got to the point where she decided, hey, I'm lost. I need to get saved. So we said, okay, let's go to the water. And she looked at us and she said, I can't do that. She said, all my relatives around here, they're all Catholics. That wouldn't be a good thing to do that. And I said to the lady through my translator, because some of it needed translating. And so I said to her, what do you mean your, your friends and family are Catholic? She said, well, my uncle over there across the way, she pointed to a house. She said, uh, he's Catholic. And I said, no, not anymore. We baptized him yesterday. She said, oh, well, my, my brother over here in this house, he's, he's Catholic. I said, nope, we just baptized him this morning. And she went on and on to name all these people. And she said, wow, I guess I'm outnumbered. I, I better get the water now. <laughs> yeah, we took her to water, baptized her. And now there's no Catholics in that neighborhood. <laughs> that's a good one, man. That, those are, well, these are real stories of real people, right? And that's yeah. the cool part. So tell us about yourself, your name, where you're from, and an interesting fact. Okay, my name is John Rowe. I am the pulpit minister, of all things pulpit minister, for the Southwest Church of Christ in Phoenix, Arizona. I've been here almost five years. They hired me and I said, you better be careful what you're getting here because we're going to use your baptistry a lot. And I'm not going to do much, you know, preparing for sermons in the pulpit. My, I, I'm, my emphasis is outside the pulpit. They said, okay, well, well, we'll take the journey with you. And well, they're pretty happy. We average over 40 baptisms a year, and I do soul winning workshops throughout the country and sometimes in the Philippines where we train people in personal evangelism. If you want me to come and do a, a workshop at your congregation and hey, I'm cheap, I'm free. So if you pay for my gas and my hotel, everything else is good. But the message you bring is priceless, man. We like to talk on the show about practical points of personal evangelism, you know, and strategies and things people can do. What are about two to three things that you think that work for you and other people that others can learn from and, and use? Well, I have a pretty simplistic approach. It's not really fancy. It's very basic. The, the, the beauty of it is it's easy to learn. And it's a non-threatening one-on-one -on -one approach where you just get to know people. I mean, I basically start out with people by saying, tell me about yourself, just like anybody would if you're trying to get to know somebody. And eventually, as they're telling me about their story and their life and everything, I say, well, how are you and the Lord doing? You know, what's what's going on with you and God? And so they'll begin to tell me about how they're related to God. And if they have a conversion story, I try to get that out. And usually I find out when when we're getting the conversion story that they were saved before baptism. So that's a big one, you know. And then I just say, oh, that's a great story. I, I can tell you really love the Lord. Can we, can I, we could look at some verses together? And I'd like to tell you my story of how I came to know the Lord, and we just go through my, my three main points in my presentation are, who is Jesus, number one, number two, what did he do, called the gospel, and number three, how do we get in on it, that's step number three. So, right. you know, we, we teach them who Jesus is, why we need to believe in him, how he provides salvation, and what he did to provide salvation. We focus the whole presentation on the gospel, everything points to the gospel, because that's the power of God to salvation. Not my personal story, not my personality, my great theology, but Jesus and what he did. It's all about the gospel. And then the third point, we talk about, okay, first off, point number one, you need to believe in Jesus. Point number two, you need to believe in the gospel. Point number three, you need to obey the gospel. And we look at what the Bible teaches on obedience to the gospel, believing in Jesus, repenting of sins, being baptized. And uh, that's how we obey the gospel. We connected with Romans 6, 3 through 4 at the end. Go to Acts chapter 2, show them a practical application of how people heard the gospel, how they obeyed the gospel, how they got in. So that's pretty much it. As I'm doing workshops, I focus on two major examples. Jesus, the soul winner, when he met uh, the, the Samaritan woman at the well, John 4, we talked about how Jesus found common ground. He focused on uh, salvation and he finished in a definitive way telling the uh, woman how he's he's the center of salvation so that's one example the, that's the jesus at the well in john 4 the second example i use is in acts chapter 8 philip and the ethiopian eunuch and you can see there how he guided that man to salvation and water came along and they got in the water so that's kind of where i go with that excellent and uh, you know of course we did it's great that they don't follow us right 
right. They, that's, that's why right. we don't give. <laughs> that's why we give him Jesus, because he's he's the man. He's the one. <laughs> there you go. When you go and approach somebody and, and, per, and you tell people, as you're in your workshops, what's some things that you tell people they can, that they're afraid or, or they're not sure how to start? Is there something that you look for or you you're kind of look for an opportunity or what, what's the strategy there? I open up a workshop pretty early on in the discussion. We basically talk about our fears about evangelism okay. and, and uh, you know, I don't know enough. Uh, I don't know how to get started. They might ask a difficult question. I might lose a friend if I do that. All these fears, and I try to dismantle all that by saying, listen, all you have to have, you just need to know one Bible verse, which leads you into a uh, chain reference Bible where you have the next verse uh, down at the bottom of that page and the next person, the next pa passage at the bottom. And so you just need to know 1 John 5, 13. We start there with, how do, you know, can we know for sure we're going to heaven? And then we move through a chain reference and they've got a marked. So I, I just tell people you need a marked Bible and you need a plan. That's all you need. You need to know where you're going. You need to have an idea of how you're going to move through a discussion. And, you know, it's really simple. It takes all of about 45 minutes to an hour to share the gospel with somebody. So do you have uh, any stories, another story for us? Okay, I'll tell you a story of a workshop I did in Tucson, Arizona, which is about two hours south of us. I did a workshop down there and I always do my workshops on Saturdays. It's uh, nine in the morning till three in the afternoon. And I usually come in when I do a workshop on a Friday night, spend the night and then get up the next morning and do the workshop. Well, my custom actually is, and it finally worked this time, worked a couple other times too, but I'll tell you one time when it worked, I come on a Friday night, I go to a local restaurant and I try to just engage people and find people in the restaurant there. So uh, as it was when uh, a year and a half ago, when I was in Tucson, Arizona, I met Mary Jane and my wife and I were talking with her. We sat at her table and had, had dinner with her that night. And I said, I got a crazy question for you. Would you like to come to a seminar that I'm doing tomorrow morning? Uh, and I, of course, I didn't even think she'd come, you know. Well, she showed up at the seminar, at the workshop. So when we, she got to the workshop, I said, I want to ask you another crazy question. I said, can I use you later on in the afternoon when I do the gospel presentation? I'm going to show people how I engage a lost person. And I want you to be pretend to be the lost person. And I'll pretend to be the soul winner. And we'll show them how we share the gospel with people. Well, she agreed to do it. She came sat on the front pew there. I'm given the workshop and I'm saying, okay, this is Mary Jane. She's going to pretend like she's lost. No, all that. We sit down, we go through the whole scriptures and boy, her eyes are getting big. And she finally looks up to me and she says, uh, Hey, you know what? I'm not pretending anymore. I'm really lost. Let's get the water. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> so man. We baptized her. Then the last hour of the workshop, I said, now I want to show you what I did and why I did what I did with Mary Jane and how it can work for you. That was a real time uh, experience right there for everybody. <laughs> and that's happened a couple other times. That's not a freak thing. It's happened a couple of times. Same situation. We're right there using them as a role play in the workshop. They realize, oh, I need to get saved. Yeah, no, it's good because in, in people's heads, a lot of times there it's different than reality. You know, like in your head, you think oh, everything's good. But then when you when you hold up to the truth and Jesus, things fall away. How did you go to the, the person in the diner? I just talk to people all the time. I mean, she was there. I said, hi, my name's John. We're new to the town. You know, oh, that's good. What, what, what's, what's the city like? You know what? I, you know, try to find common ground. Here's my wife. And of course, female uh, touch helps a lot. And they're yeah. get, engaging and everything, you know, so yeah, you just. You just meet people where they are. You meet people where they are. That's the key, yeah. isn't it? That's what Jesus did at the, the well with the Samaritan woman at the well, you know? What's, what's some, like some things that you've got, difficult things that you've encountered and how have you dealt with them sometimes? Because some people might be worried about that. So like, how, how do you usually deal with something that might be hard or, or you know, make, give you some fear? A couple things on that. Number one, I tell people when I teach them how to share the gospel, if they come up with a question that doesn't, particularly relate to what you're dealing with, or it's one of those stump the preacher questions, you know, you yeah. just write the question down. You tell the person, that's a great question. You know, I got to tell you, I'd like myself to do some study on that. And I'm going to write that down. And after we're done with the gospel here, that's what I want us to focus on. I promise I'll get back to you with an answer on that question. That's good. So, so take them back to uh, Jesus, always the gospel, yeah, the good well, news. And the main thing is don't let them guide the discussion. <laughs> if they've got a question, that can be a picked up somewhere else in another setting. You want to stay with your agenda. We came to share the gospel, not talk about instrumental music or, you know, the Lord's <laughs> Supper or whatever other topic they want to bring up, you know, that's not our focus. No, it's not. That's not. Everything falls into line when you're right with Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you got to get, you got to, you know, you got to get them into Christ before they're concerned about the technical questions about what it means afterwards to be in Christ. 
Well, and, th- and it won't matter. Like at that point, if you want to follow Jesus, you'll do what he said. You'll, you'll follow him as a child. So uh, yeah, I learned that a while ago when I was talking to Muslims. At first, I thought that I would um, need to learn all about the Quran and no, how, you, you know, the, no, I just said, I, I, I said, I'll focus on Jesus. So every time you po- po- focus back on Jesus. And with other religions and other like systems of belief and they get into other questions, you don't, I, once some, somebody once told me, you don't know, need to know, like you said with the Muslims, you didn't need to know. You don't need to know about all the counterfeits. You just need to know the original. Right. Well, and a lot of times people don't know about Jesus, like even the Mormons or, or Muslims. They don't know who Jesus really is. They've been told who Jesus was through some other party. And, yeah. and to be able to learn who he really is, that, that, that what he really taught, that's a powerful thing. If you're a Christian right now and you're listening to this, this show, you became a Christian for a reason. You yeah. followed Jesus for a reason. You believed in Jesus. It wasn't somebody else who believed for you. So yeah. you, you can tell people about Jesus, and you don't have to tell them about anything but Jesus and say he taught, he's, he, he, he died, he rose again, and uh, that's powerful. <laughs> you know, one other quick thing that I ran into one time, too, is I, my, my, one of my opening questions when I'm getting to know somebody is I always ask, what if the Lord would come right now? Would you know for sure, without a doubt, that you'd go to heaven? Well, yeah. I always usually, you know, get a standard answer. But one time this guy threw me in, uh, something I wasn't ready for. He says, I don't believe in heaven, like a literal heaven or even hell. He was a JW, yeah. Jehovah's Witness, right? He says, I don't yeah. believe in heaven. There's no heaven. I thought, oh, well, what do I go now? You know, I yeah. just asked him, are you going to go to heaven, right? So I, then I thought to myself, okay, I, re, I you know, Holy Spirit kind of came into my head and said, okay, well, then if this would to be the end of the world, and would you then go to be with God or not? So I changed it from go to heaven to be with God. Because yeah, yeah. hopefully he believes that, right? That he's going to be yeah. with God and live with him eternally, right? So right, you have right. to sort of change things up a little bit when people you know, come at you from a different angle. Well, and like you said, Jesus had told the disciples, I'll give you what to say. Like the Holy Spirit's there to help us. Like people can be confident to know that God is with you on this mission. You know, like he, yeah. he's going to give you the words that you need to say if you don't know. So that faith and knowing that Jesus is always here with us. He'll never forsake us in those moments. You had what to say, you know? Got enough time to share a quick, another quick little story? You, sure. This is really a story. But in the, in the seminar, what I do, I tell people, hey, listen, don't think you don't think that I've got an advantage over you just because I'm a preacher. And I tell them, listen, the average Christian can do this. And in fact, you guys have an advantage over me as a preacher, because when people see me, what do they think? Oh, here's the theologian. No, he's going to hammer me. He's going to you know, come out. But a, a person who's not a preacher and I when I share the gospel with people, I try to not tell them really early on or at least till later that I'm a preacher. So they don't you know, get a, they put their wall up, you know. But anyway, I tell people when you have an advantage over me, because look at it this way. You know, you, you have a, com- a TV commercial and they're sh- selling shampoo, right? OK, so when they sell shampoo, does the guy come out in a white lab jacket, laboratory jacket, listing all the chemicals? This is why you want to buy the shampoo, right? That's the a, that's a paid professional. I said, no, no, no. How do they sell the shampoo? It's the satisfied customer. It's the lady with the blonde, bouncy hair that comes out. That sells the product. I say, listen, guys, you non-preachers out there, you're the satisfied customer. I'm the right. a professional. So, anyway. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so what, what you're saying then, John, is that anybody could do this. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so the reason that most people don't, what do you find? The number one, number one reason people don't do this. It's tough. There's a lot of them. I'd say probably if I had to pick number one is I'm going to lose a friend or get a family. Okay. Yeah, so ridicule, rejection from people close to you is yeah. uh, seems to be like a big one. Great. Well, let's let's get let's call everybody to action. So, what's some words that we can encourage people with as they've heard the episode, they've listened through this, they've heard a couple things that they can do. What's some things that we can send them off uh, and encourage them with a call to action? There. Well, let's go back to the you know you're afraid you're going to lose a friend or a relative. Again, you know you've heard this before, but I think it's worth saying is that would you rather them be upset with you here or in or when in, in eternity, right? <laughs> But right. the thing is that you can still find a non-threatening way to engage them and still not upset them. Leave the door open for further conversation. If they tell you, hey, listen, I don't want to talk about that now. You always shake a hand, leave a friend, say, OK, well, I'm glad. Just thank you for you know talking this much about it with me. If you ever want to talk about it with me, here's my name and here's my card, my number. You know, give me a call sometime because later on down the road, they're going to lose a loved one. They're going to be in a funeral. They're going to get depressed three months later. And you know what? They'll pick up that card. They'll call you and they'll want to now be willing to talk about it. But so uh, call to action. You know, Jesus said best call to action. He said, go into all the world. 
And you know what we do is we've we built our church buildings. We've hired our preacher. We put our ad in the paper and whatever, in the, you know, advertise, put the Internet website on and all that stuff like that. And instead of saying, you know, Jesus says, go into all the world. We instead say, come and, and see our fancy buildings, listen to our great preacher and look at our warm, friendly environment. And we say, come, come while Jesus is saying, go. And so I think what we need to do is we need to go. We need to be more like Acts 542. It says daily in the temple and from house to house. They did not cease preaching and teaching Jesus as the Christ. we got to get the, the gospel out of the church building. We 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 were already enjoying it. We've been comfortable. we got to get out of the building, out on the street where the people are. Jesus did not command the lost to come to church. He commanded the church to go to the lost. That's, right. That's what we're to do. And so we got to get that focus right. We got to stop playing church every Sunday. It's great to be with Christians, great to worship, great to hear nice singing, good preaching and all that. But our job's not over, man. There's people out there that are lost and they're a lot of times they're not going to come into our building. We got to go find them. We got to talk to the banker. We got to talk to the waitress. We got to say to that waitress, hey, you got a nice smile. You must be a Christian. She might say, yeah, well, I'm trying to follow God or I think I am. Hey, can you tell me about your story? Hey, can I tell you about my story? You get into gospel dialogue, and before you know it, you got them in the water. I mean, it's that easy. The power is not in your personality or your way of presenting it. The power is in the gospel. we got to right. stop being ashamed or afraid. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why, Paul? Because it's the power of God to salvation, Romans 1, 16. So we got to act like, uh, you know, we got to be Christians who are excited about our Christianity. I, I find too many Christians, they look like they've been baptized in motor oil, man. we got to. <laughs> We gotta find the joy we gotta and you know I, I i feed off that joy because when i get new christians i take them with me i take them out to share and show them how to share the gospel a friend right. of mine or a, a new brother in christ who was baptized just uh, about nine months ago john lancaster he came with me last week and uh, we baptized five into christ he was responsible for three of them he found wow. the joy he had the joy already he's a new christian he saw it and other people now are baptized and he says can we go on some more studies can we do that some more so yeah i mean get excited you know there's there's souls to win we don't have all of this time we we're, it's a short time we're here on this planet so we got to act like the gospel is urgent it's important don't be afraid don't be ashamed jesus will help you win your friends and neighbors and your en enemies as well to christ you can't uh, change anyone's life if you don't engage in their life and talk to them, right? Like yeah. if you just sit silently by, it won't. So here's the thing. Here's the thing, everybody. G if, you, if you are a Christian, then you must believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that you, you believe that he rose from the dead. And there's no greater news than that this person, Jesus yeah. Christ, rose from the dead over sin and all those things. And you have that message and you can tell people about it. And that's why it's called the good news. I think it should be called the great news. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> but, what I would say. <laughs> Right. And you have good news. Would you tell your friends good news about something else? Why don't we tell our friends and family about the real good news that you lasts forever? The pill that's going to heal their cancer. You would not want to give them the pill, right? That's right. And guess here. Listen, I know it's you're gonna, you're afraid right now. You're you're having those thoughts in your heads and saying, I know I should do this, but we're both alive. Me and John. We feel on fire because we actually share the good news. Like we actually go through those difficult things. We actually step out in faith and, and, and we're not, I know I'm not, John, about you, but I'm not ever courageous or I only have the courage because God's love is so great for others and they're lost without me being involved in, in, this, in this whole great mission, the great commission. And I, you know, so. I'm afraid of other things, but I tell you what, I'm more afraid of the devil and I'm more That's right. interested in getting the gospel that, that keep him from the devil. First of all, John, thank you very much for being on the show. I appreciate well, you evangel being here. Evangelism is not a workshop. Evangelism is not a podcast. It's a lifestyle. That's right. And I, I call it the Great Commission is the mission. Because yeah. that is that if you there is no other mission to be a famous person, successful in your career. That is nothing compared to the mission well, God has given us. Career is not your life, not your mission. That is that is where you can apply the Great Commission and make your mission in that thing that you're in right now. So don't think that uh, you have to become a preacher or an evangelist or anything like that to go do the Great Commission. Jesus didn't say, go those of you who are this way. <laughs> he said, go all of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you have a great commitment to the great command and the great commission, you will be a great Christian. That's right. That's right. And you'll, and you'll be alive.
I tell you, you said that baptized in motor oil. If you're listening and you don't feel alive, you, you go to church, you know, you do your thing. You go Sundays and Wednesdays, whatever. But you just don't feel a fire inside you. That's because we're not sharing the good news with people. And when you share the good news, God can work through you in He'll his kingdom. So that's it. So I'm going to encourage you to go. Try something today. Uh, go and talk to somebody. And just ask them, like John said, just ask them a question about who they are. Get to know them. You don't have an agenda. You just have good news to share. You've been listening to Be Brave. The world right now is a crazy place, and sharing the love of God is the most important thing we can do right now. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit up GoBeBrave.org. Remember, the love of God is the most powerful force in the universe. Learn how to love like Jesus. See you next time.